With me, Mazen Abu Fadl, he is the director of the cath lab as well as the interventional cardiology fellowship at the University of Colorado. Welcome, Mazen. Oklahoma. Aida. Colorado. Colorado. I don't know. <laughs> you want me to live here, but I don't live here. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna. This is Shai Reis from CVI 2019, Denver, Colorado. With me is Dr. Mazen Abu Fadl. He is the director of the cath lab as well as director of interventional cardiology at the University of Oklahoma. Welcome, Mazen. Thank you. So, Mazen, you uh, you are giving a talk about vascular access. We know access, success. So uh, it's almost a barrier, especially for the radialist when we go to the femoral axis. So, what is your tips and tricks for the operators? Absolutely, vascular access is definitely the most important step to perform a good procedure. If I'm performing a procedure, once the axis is good, my heart rate goes down and uh, you, you feel good. Absolutely. So the more we are doing radial, the less we are doing femoral, and this is affecting the trainees in some way, in the sense that they're not getting as much volume of femoral axis. Sure. Now, an interventional cardiologist, it's important to know both axes well. There's no question radial axis is the way to go, but you still need to be good at vascular axis from the femoral approach. And to do that, really, you need to be good at performing ultrasound dedicated to access. Uh, and if somebody doesn't know how to do that, it's always good to start practicing on venous access with ultrasound. And then the more they do, they can get better at it. So this would be the first thing really trainees need to do is learn how to perform ultrasound guided access. Right. The other tips and tricks have to do with the procedure itself. Um, locating the right place to advance the needle under ultrasound guidance using micropuncture. I always like to check when I head the artery with the micropuncture and advance the needle, like to make sure that the needle wire interface are in the middle of the head of the femur. Right. So I take small floral, make sure it's there. If it's not, you can always come save back. time to come out, hold pressure, and then another Excellent. try. Yeah. So, uh, how, do you use a f you use a micropuncture for French to do like an injection, especially for a large bore? I personally don't. A lot of people that I spoke to and during the talk and on the panel do that. I've, uh, from personal experience, these small micropunctures like for French sheep, when you connect a syringe to them and inject, you cannot see a tracing. You cannot. You don't know if it's below a plaque. You don't know if it's against the wall. Virtual I've state. unfortunately had a dissection just from the injecting through it with a very small injection, but the hole is so small, the dye goes out very strong. Uh, strong. Yeah. So as long as the needle wire interface is in the right place, and I know I'm above the bifurcation with ultrasound, yeah. it's usually not needed have to too be many confirmations. So I prefer not to do that step. All right. So you're done, you do access, you put the large bore at the end. Do you, closure device, it's almost a barrier for the fellows because different labs, different practice, some of the technician do the closure. So then, Kafir, what's your advice for the trainee in terms of closure? They need to voice that they are interested in learning closure. Yeah. They need to definitely let the, their attendings know and they need to work with the attending at the end of the case to, you know, they should not be shy. Yeah. If you're shy, you won't learn. So they need to say, hey, I want to learn per close. I want to learn angio seal. I want to learn large bore uh, closure. And then they need to be there you know, see it and try it and do it. The more you do, the better. And yeah. that's the time to do it is during fellowship. In terms of dry closure, do you do it always, sometimes, never? For sometimes. Large bore? sometimes. When do you use it? My experience with large bore is limited to Tavers. Yeah. And um, we get ultrasound and we do pre-close. Uh, we've not done a lot of when all of them have been successful so I've not had to do uh, you know any other up technique. and over up and over closure. we've had to do it a few times okay. just to actually make sure access is good and we had one that we needed to get good hemostasis but in general pre-close directly after we do ultrasound access and these have been working well That's with good. the ultrasound always can help you as well see if there's calcification if there's a plaque you can go above it or below it so when you're seeing where you're going it not only helps the access but it helps the regress and the closure in one of the sessions one of the vascular surgeons said he does long access compared to short to transverse yeah. so w what's your uh, preference we do, or we do both but in general to get access we do the short access to see the anterior wall of the artery and the needle going in mm -hmm. it's easier when you do it in the short access 
the long axis helps you see the wire. So instead of actually taking a giving contrast, and you can see the wire. The long axis also helps you see when the artery starts diving, you know, down Deep, into yeah. the pelvis. This means you're getting towards the um, external iliac artery and above the inguinal art, uh, inguinal ligament. Yeah. So when you when you want to take an ultrasound, if you just take a longitudinal for axis screening for screening and then when you have the wire it's easy to follow the wire in the longitudinal axis. so both are good yeah nice yeah. well thank you so much for these uh, great vascular access tips uh, watch this video and others on cvi youtube channel thanks Mazin, for your time thank you thank you for having me i thank appreciate you, you. bye, -bye.